Hi, this is Bitluni and today I'm going to show you my RISC-V Supercluster. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. In the past few months I was really busy making a lot of fun projects and I wanted to share a few of those with you. One of those projects has to do with these 10 cent RISC-V microcontrollers that Dave Jones presented recently. The MCU is made by WCH, which is the company that also makes all the cheap USB to serial bridges that we experienced before. They have been a core component of our cheap IoT devices in the past 10 years. And you know, I like it cheap. Now WCH moved on to using the RISC-V architecture, which is open, so there are also open development tools that you can use. I wanted to try them myself and since they are so cheap I thought we can put plenty of those on one PCB so we can make a super cluster. I used KaiKit to design the board and it was actually the first time I did a four layer design. I put them in a matrix arrangement so each of them is used as an individual LED and they are pink. To communicate between the MCUs I decided to put on an 8 bit bus. The remaining IOs are used for a debugging pin, the reset and some GPIOs that can be routed to an edge connector. This way we end up with plenty IOs and an ADC per MCU and maybe some sort of matrix even. The MCUs are on the front and on the back there are only two connectors which are quite dense with 1.27 pin pitch. After I had this design finished I continued making this baseboard which is basically a carrier that interfaces all the MCUs. It just has this big brother RISC-V MCU on there. The plan was that this bigger MCU would feed the data to all the small MCUs so they can carry out their tasks. It has also native USB so it's easier to handle. Being able to program all the MCUs over the debug pin was always a concern of mine. I thought that if I control the reset line from the bigger MCU to each of the smaller MCUs, I'll be able to use only one debug line to program each of those individually. That was a misconception, but more on that later. However, I finished the design and submitted it to JLCPCB, which is today's sponsor. JLCPCB offers affordable PCBs, assembly and even 3D printing now. I like them because they are quick and I can use LCSC parts or day part manager to do assembly. I did a few assemblies in the recent weeks and I was really surprised how fast they are. I have a few cool projects coming up. By the time I designed my super cluster, the MCU wasn't really available there yet. So I ordered only the boards. Now I'm using the parts manager which is also new to me. You can pre-order the parts that you need for your production runs. If you have any questions, the live support on the website is always helpful. In this case I was worried because the status changed the refund in the payment and I thought I wouldn't get my MCUs. But they just told me I shouldn't worry because they were able to purchase the MCUs cheaper than anticipated. So I even get a partial refund. However for this project I only ordered the PCBs and the stencils and got the MCUs from WCH directly. The PCBs arrived quite quickly. And I was really happy to hold my first 4 layer PCBs in my hands. Oh yes. What? This is tiny. 16 MCUs. Nice. Sweet. Assembling the boards I quickly find out why this soda paste from AliExpress was so cheap. It was so liquid uh, it wouldn't hold the shape on the pad. However, I put on the parts anyways and refloated it on my new hot plate. That's also cheap and from AliExpress, but it works really well. Because of the crappy solder paste, I had some solder bridges, but that was easily to fix. I just used my soldering iron to drag away the blocks. Using enough flux helps a lot. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
I wasn't able to solder all the MCUs at once because I learned from Charles Lore that the debug pin is always active even though the reset pin is low. I thought I can use the individual reset pins to control which MCU is programmed and debugged, but that wouldn't work with this design. Basically, all the MCUs will still listen to the debug pin and try to respond. And that would be a total chaos on the one wire interface. So my plan was to put on the MCUs individually and program them with firmware that would turn off the debug pin in yes. software. That worked well for the first three MCUs, but then I messed up and somehow all the other ones turned on at once and were reprogrammed. How did that happen? Did I just program four of the MCUs at once? I simply assumed that the communication would end up in a chaos, but actually it worked. I was really surprised. I was able to program all at once. And this is how I actually started to reinvent the wheel on my live stream to design the bus communication. The bus is an open drain bus, which means we have external pull-ups and each of the MCUs is only able to pull the bus down. We can have multiple MCUs that can try to talk on the bus at the same time and it wouldn't cause any shorts if one MCU is low and the other one is high on the same line. The current state of the protocol is that each MCU on the bus can start talking at the same time. To detect the collisions, a packet starts with the unique ID of the MCU that's talking. If someone else is talking, then this unique ID at the beginning would change and it would just detect that. Cool, cool. Oh, nice. And this is the first super cluster program that actually works and it's a blink program. One struggler. Yeah, it's not struggling. It has just a completely different ID. Yeah, apparently it takes time to develop a, a new protocol. <laughs> the main MCU on the base just brute forces all the IDs and tries to toggle the LED of each of the MCUs. And you can see the packets arrive at different times. I think most of the packets are lost because it's still slow, but we are getting there. So what do you think we should put on this super cluster now? We should also try to utilize the extension ports for maybe video cards, audio or whatever. We have 16 ADCs and plenty of GPIOs. Also, did you notice that this square might be tileable? Hmm. How many cores are too many? Subscribe to find out and tune in next time. Super great thanks to all my supporters which have been really supportive over the past months. Also thank you to JLT for sponsoring this project and I see you next time. Bye! Super <laughs> shippable, yes. <laughs> oh.